we produce five exabytes of data every two days. This is the same amount of data they used from the beginning of civilization until 2003. And in 2020, we will have um, data in our hands um, more than 57 times more than the number of grains in the world. Really? I am not sure because um, I am not sure who count all the numbers of grains in the world, but, but that's what I will read from an article in the, on the net. So um, anyway, people visualize data for different purposes. Some people visualize that because they just want to see patterns. Others do that because they want to see large quantities of data at once, while others are looking for the answers for their questions. As a data visualizer and artist, I think data is so powerful and it can raise our levels of awareness which would lead our changes in behavior. In other words, if we perceive the world around us and ourselves, then we might try to refine our behavior and eventually will improve ourselves. I think that's the true benefit we can take from the visualization. So today, I'm going to, I'm going to show you different you know, my experiments to achieve my data goals. But uh, let's just talk about data visualization first, what it is. When you hear data and visualization, this kind of visual might come to your mind first. Chart, graphs, and maps shows data in a visual spectrum. But I would say this is an infographics, not data visualization, because someone interpreted the data and converted the information and transferred into a, um, visual um, the elements. But data visualization is it's such as like a, it gives you a, a visual environment so that, um, that you can have a thinking and you can find your own perspective inside of the visual environment. So I would say um, the infographics are more about uh, um, delivering messages and conclusions. And data visualization is more about make you think and also um, give us uh, like, uh, some kind of visual environments so you can find your own perspective. So as a result, we can change our behavior in a good or desirable way. So I would define data visualization as uh, designing a system for data to flow um, correctly, efficiently, and meaningfully. In other words, it makes a path for data to move where it is uh, produced to where it will be consumed. And all the nodes should be placed in a proper positions and then linked to each other through the visual. And eventually, the visual will reveal underneath connections and hidden stories among the different data sets. So there are certain things we should consider when we visualize data, such as like uh, how to collect the data and how to link them together and how to make a rep representation for a better communication and how to choose a proper media and how to make people to be react when they see this and how our reaction will influence the original data source after they see this. And there is one another thing we should consider. Um, this is a visualization of the mobile traffic data from 2010 to 2012 in South Korea. Um, during that period, two major shifts happened in Korea, like uh, smartphones were introduced late 2009, and data became unlimited in September 2010. So each, uh, the size of each box represents the consumption of data usage of each month. These are uh, monthly visualizations. The central circle represents data traffic, and the circle above is, um, I guess it's a mobile traffic, right? Let's see, yeah, SMS traffic. And the circle to the right is the voice traffic. So um, if you compare those two, um, July and December of 2010, you can see the data usage changes dramatically. Right? So um, let me ask you a question about this. I just told you that uh, um, when you see the visualization, data visualization, 
they might be influence our thinking and we might try to change our behavior, right? But do you think that process happened in this case? Do you think you can get any connections between yourself and the visual? I would say no. I mean, personally, even though I made these visuals, and it looks great, of course, and it's really um, rich in color and very dynamic motions, but I couldn't find any connections between myself and these visuals. Um, why this thing happen? I mean, why wasn't I be able to get inspired by the visual I made? I can say that's because the clients provide answer. This project shows only how much data has been changed, but not try to make a um, really true connection between viewers and uh, visuals. It does make us to think, or even it does make us to be part of the work. I would like to say that really good visualization should allow people to have a questions um, in their mind about what they see, how they feel. So in 2008, uh, one of the Korean chemical company asked me to make a digital artwork for their new building in South Korea. And the building operates water purification system, which purifies raindrop water into drinkable water. So I decided to, to make a visual um, of that data so that people can understand this building's eco energy system. So as you can see, the inner circle grows bigger and bigger with the amount of um, saved water, you know. And when graphics are filled up, um, people are able to donate the saved water to the place who needs it. So what I'm trying to do here is that like, uh, I want to circulate data from the building to the people who see this visualization and interpret it and then um, decide either donate or not, and then uh, circulate the data to the people, the receiver who needs water. So I think this process happens only with a good understanding of the underlying data mediated through the visualization. And after that project, I was really thinking about like, uh, are we gonna have a more effective you know, awareness if we apply data into a physical space, then um, yeah, that's what I want to try. So data formation is a high rise residence building in a future city that changes its physical form based on the residence energy usage habits. So um, if the residents were about to waste energy than normal, the, the apartment will shrink in size and if the residents were saved the energy, then the apartment will increase the size. That, it doesn't make sense, right? How my apartment changes from like that. But um, what I'm trying to do here is that I'm not trying to make, okay, let's develop the really high tech, make it um, my apartment reshaped by itself. I'm not trying to do that, but instead, I was trying to say, if we apply data to the place where, where it is generated, then maybe we might have a more stronger motivation to change our behavior. So this picture shows how each unit changes. Um, if you see the left picture, it shows 90 square meter as a default, which means no energy has been used. But a month later, if the residents start to use the energy, like uh, um, gas and water in electricity, the apartment changes depending on the consumption of energy usage. So in this case, um, the apartment increased the size up to 102 square meter and the entire building will be reshaped like this. As you can see, the very first left one shows a straightforward form, which means there is no energy has been used. But as people start to using the uh, utility, then the building will be reshaped. It's like a, it, will be, it will be different from the each season and each month. So the people, outside the people, the public, and the residents would notice easily about their energy usage habits by the size of the unit and also by the, size, the shape of the, um, the apartment. And after that, um, I was trying to um, physically depict our network activities. We do Facebook, Google, and Twitter every single day, which means 
we are giving our physical energy towards data. So data, of, data currency is uh, the needing machine, needing system that um, converts our network activities into our physical energy. So um, the idea actually came from the similarity between um, sewing factories and the computer labs. Sewing factory workers work for a production line, but you know, computer lab users, we are using our physical energy towards data. So I want to combine, com, you know, convert that energy into um, somehow. So I made a, uh, this hybrid um, desk, which you know, converts our physical energy into uh, um, the physical real energy. So um, the, on the left side, I installed a computing system which people can um, Google and use the uh, data. And that, um, that, the, that which generates uh, power to learn needing systems on the right side. So I'm gonna show a video. So the needing system actually learns, you know, like according to information value, or we just in you know, a type. So I'm trying to make like a, um, if you doing the Google while you are doing the Google or googling or some doing some other things, uh, yeah, I, I, I just want to make you can make your own scarf, you know, when you finish your the, um, searching. So um, nowadays, I'm pretty much interested in like, uh, public data. Um, due to open government movements, um, I guess it's not only happening in Korea, but many countries in the world, um, there are so many public data became available than ever before. And I think um, the public data could be a really good resource for raising the public um, awareness. So this project is called City Data Seoul Daily Expenditure. Um, this shows the daily expense of each business that Seoul City is making. Um, I think if we really understand about the city and where the city is going to and what kind of a city of this city is trying to be, I think money expense could tell you a very you know, clear story about that. So um, I look at the open API that Seoul is um, like a fee, give, a, uh, give out to every single day and this is a um, screenshot of XML data of them. And I realized that um, this data is pretty much interesting as a single individual form rather than a sorted group or a piece of information. So I would like to make a visual to really give a focus on individual forms. And just for you guys who don't understand Korean, I just translate into English here. So you can see, um, the data of September 19, or the businesses that Seoul City is made. So my first um, visual was like showing a full list of uh, businesses with uh, uh, the amount of expense together. And then I was trying to give uh, individual attention to each businesses so people can see um, what kind of business is happening in Seoul. And personally, I was just so interested in this one because um, I was trying to search what kind of business are really related to my life. And then after that, I made a landscape out of 100 data that I collect. So people can feel um, how the soul expends money and how it makes shapes like that. And okay, and also I would like to highlight what will be the most appropriate uh, media for your content. There are certain data and information that people should uh, search by themselves. And there are certain information and data also should become towards to you without any extra effort. I think public information should be come to you without asking you any extra effort and asking you for other you know, actions to get the info information. So I was thinking what would be the very good you know, media um, platform to expose public uh, information. So public screen could be a really good choice, I guess. So while you are waiting for your subway, or maybe having lunch with your friends, or maybe just walking on the street afternoon, if you can get uh, this piece of information naturally, then probably our public awareness will rise a little bit more, higher. 
So the original idea of this project was use, was about to use um, so uh, the city disp display and the urban display, but city regulation blocked my approach. Mm, so I had to show this piece at the museums and the galleries in South Korea. But after I showed this piece in the gallery, uh, Seoul city government people saw that one at the galleries and they decided to show this at the public screen next year in Seoul. So when you visit the Korea next time, next year, okay. <laughs> so if you visit the Seoul next year, then probably you can see this at the, um, the subway stations or you know, some outside. Personally, um, the, I really think, um, I really want you guys to visualize your data um, to perceive all about yourself and to know what's going on um, or in, in your environments because I really don't, if you are trying to predict your future with the data, then um, probably you are gonna make so many mistakes and misunderstandings. So data visualization pretty much good if you want to see who you are and what was happened in before. So, because um, a wise um, the perception of the world will make your tomorrow much, much better. Thank you.